Hey guys, uh, so we talked about the other day that I picked up this beer kit, this holiday ale, and uh, what I want to do is uh, we're going to brew it today. So what we're going to do right now is uh, for this inside part is I'm going to put the specialty grains in a muslin bag. And we got the uh, crushed chocolate and black patent malt, and we have the crushed caramel malt. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in this guy. So, here we go. Find the end that's open, of course. One end is going to be sewed shut, sewn shut. And so we just open it up like this. And we're going to put the grains in. Get yourself a pair of scissors. And they come sealed like this. So what you really want to do is maybe just cut the corner. So we're going to cut the corner. Pretty big hole and uh, have a pan or something underneath uh, to catch the spillage and I have a little pan here I just got the bag sitting in it we're gonna go ahead and pour in the grains now you don't want to squish these grains together or anything you just want to pour them in uh, so that's one pretty much making like a big tea bag with this stuff So we're going to go ahead and cut the other one, like so, and pour it in as well. Pretty easy to do. Now, you got your grains in your, tea, your big tea bag, if you will. We're going to go ahead and tie a knot on the end so we don't spill any of it out of the bag. Just going to tie a knot. You can do a double knot, single knot. Single knot's usually good enough. And what we'll do is um, we'll take this tea bag, or bag of specialty grains. Remember, these are the grains that add the color and the flavors in your beer that you're looking for uh, to give it that special characteristic for that particular style of beer. Um, so we will steep this in 155 degree water for 20 minutes and then we will get it out of the water and set it in a uh, strainer bag or a strainer and then we will pour more hot water over it just to kind of rinse the rest of the uh, grains real good to get as much of the color out as we can and any sugars but uh, yeah so we'll go and get our water heated up and we will get this steeped okay guys <clears throat> we've put our grains in our steeping bag our muslin bag now we need to heat up two and a half gallons of water to 155 degrees, 150 to 165 degrees. I always do about 155, so we're gonna go ahead and get the water heated up. Turn my propane on. And we're gonna get back to you uh, as soon as this is up. Uh, 155 degrees and we'll do the grain steeping okay guys we have reached 155 degrees so I've killed the burner now we just got a nice pot of hot water here to steep our grains so remember the grains from earlier that we put in our bag we're gonna go ahead and just put it in here and steep it in like tea and the thing is you don't want to squeeze the bag at all because what you end up doing is squeezing all those little pieces of grain and it'll end up in your wort at the end. You don't you want to try and uh, avoid squeezing the bag. So we're just going to kind of steep it around like a tea bag for a little bit here for a couple minutes and then we'll let it sit for 20 minutes. You can already kind of see the color changing in the pot. It smells really good. It, it, it does smell really good. You can start to smell the grains big time as they steep. And this is, you don't want the burner on. You just want to kill the burner for this part. And what we're going to do after this is steeped, we'll get this to a boil. Just two and a half gallons of water. We'll get it to a boil. And then we'll start adding our hops and our extracts and all the other stuff.
Yeah, that's pretty good. So you can just take it, just kind of tie it around the handle for now. Just a temporary tie, like that. Well, you want the grains in the water though, so let me loosen it up some. <laughs> want them to sit in more lower in the actual water. Just like that. Just let it sit. And when we come back we'll get this to a rolling boil. And also I forgot to mention we'll actually rinse these grains, uh, rinse the bag some to get to, uh, as much of the uh, color out and uh, any sugars as well and flavors. Okay. So the greens has been steeping for about 20 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and untie it from the pot. And uh, go ahead and let them drain some. See that color? That's just from the greens. Just from the greens so far. So we're gonna set it in this strainer like so. Now I've went and heated up a pot of water to uh, pour over the grains to rinse the grains some and so my neighbor decides to cut his yard while I'm doing this but oh well I guess right so we'll go ahead and rinse the grain bed with some of this hot water I heated up We're just going to try to get as much of the color out of these grains as possible. And I only do it to the point that I'm at about the three gallon mark. And am I? Yeah, close to. sit for a second continue the drain I want to kill that guy <laughs> doesn't you know I'm shooting a video the bag you're gonna have all kinds of grain pieces and stuff in your pot and you want to try to not do that as much as possible so I kept my pot from earlier or my pan from earlier to set this bag in and take the strainer off I recommend getting one of these that way you can set your grain on your grain bag in and you can rinse it now we got about three gallons of uh, work ready to go here. Okay, as you can see we got a boil going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna dial the flame down quite a bit. Because what we want to do now is add our extracts. Actually we can just uh, go ahead and kill the flame. So what we want to do, we don't want to scorch the extract. So just killing the flame, or if you're in your kitchen, take the pot off the burner for this part. And you need a spoon, put your spoon in there. And this stuff is real sticky, so. And what we're gonna do is we're going to sprinkle it in. And just stir it, stir it, stir it. See how it foams up? That's why you want to take it off the burner as well. That way you don't get an over, a boil over. We're just going to kind of give this a good stir. And this stuff is real sticky. All right, that part's done. Now I had these, uh, remember earlier we had these two cans of extract that I introduced to you in my other video when I was showing the kit. 
I had these cans sitting in some hot water so that the extract would liquefy more. Now we're gonna take that. Real sticky syrupy stuff, guys. We're gonna take this and just stir, 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 stir while you pour it in. You don't want any of it to sit on the bottom and scorch. So just stir, stir, stir while you add this stuff. And just keep stirring it. Get it dissolved real well. You try to get as much of the extract out as the uh, jar as you can. Just kind of scrape it with your spoon. I've seen people take actually uh, take some of their brew pot wort and add it to the cup to help to get it out of the cup. Just keep stirring it. Scrape all the insides of that uh, extract jar as much as you can. Get as much of that sugar out. And once we get all this out and out of the other jar, then we can resume our boil. Alright, now let's get the other can. It's like pure liquid sugar. <laughs> this is what makes those yeast all happy. They eat on the sugars in this stuff. And you can see my volume came up to almost four gallons here just from adding the extracts. on the sides of this cup. Alright. Try to just get a good stir again. Adds a more color to it and all the extra sugar you need. These extracts are the base malt, if you will, for this beer. When I do an all grain beer, I use base malts and specialty grains together and I put them in a mash tun and mash it all together and then the sugars and the color and everything come out with the grain that way. Okay, we've stirred all the extract in, so now let's get the burner back on. Let's get this, let's get this to a rolling boil. And about five minutes into the boil, we will add our hops, our first hop addition. Kind of give it some stirs as it goes. Okay guys, <clears throat> I've had this boil a little bit after I added the extracts. 
uh, it was foaming up quite a bit. I almost had a boil over, and uh, that tends to happen uh, until you get past the hot break. But the hot break is when all the proteins kind of separate. Um, and what will happen is, is the proteins in the malt will uh, start to foam up real bad. And once you get your get past that point, you can start adding your hops and everything. So we're about five minutes into the boil. You can still see we got some hot break over here still going on. Um, I've just been kind of monitoring the flame to keep it from boiling over. And uh, usually when you add your hops, uh, it can tend to try to boil over as well. So in my other video, I said that the um, hops, uh, the centennials were the aroma hops, but actually they're the bittering hops. So we're going to go ahead and add them now. And let's see what happens here. I'm right next to the burner in case this thing tries to boil over. So here we go. And we're going to let these, see, see that? You want to control your burner or turn the heat off or down. Um, just to kind of control the boil over. And we're going to let these hops boil for 40 minutes. I'm setting my timer now. And after these have uh, boiled for 40 minutes, we'll add our uh, other hops. The Willamette hops. We'll add them and boil for 15 more minutes. And also at the time when we add the Willamette, we'll also add our spice pack. That's going to give it that holiday flavor. So this is the heart attack. I call this the heart attack moment because <laughs> any minute this thing could boil over on you and it can create a terrible mess which is why it's always good to do it outside if you can um, but if you're in your kitchen you got you can control your burners and even lift the pot off the burner if it starts to get crazy um, but you can see it's kind of settled down now and you just want a good rolling boil like this and uh, we're going to let this go for 40 minutes and after that we'll add the Willamette hops alright while we're waiting for this uh, first edition of hops to boil for 40 minutes, I decided to go and get a beer because it's always good to enjoy what you've brewed before while you're brewing something else. And uh, this is my pumpkin ale that I brewed back in September, early September. So, cheers. Yeah, yeah it's so good. All you taste is like. A lot of pumpkin pie spice on the front end with a you can taste the pumpkin on the back end some and it's very malt forward as well but it's so good very good and uh, yeah so we're doing that and we're waiting for this to uh, boil so we can add our last hop addition and spice pack for the holiday ale so yeah cheers um, beautiful day in Houston that's why I decided to brew on the back deck today because uh, it's such a beautiful day. Breezy, feels very much like spring, not fall. And uh, my garage has got a lot of crap in it right now, so I decided just to do it on the back deck since the weather's so nice. And uh, uh, filming this video, I'm using my GoPro with a Rode Video Mic Pro, and I'm actually doing this on my iPhone 6 Plus. But uh, yeah, this is my setup over there just a tripod stand with my Rode Video Mic Pro and my GoPro 3 Plus Silver shoots great 1080p video and uh, great for this brewing beer so. anyways I thought I would just have a little chat with you while I'm waiting for this to boil and while the jets roar over me I'm nowhere near an Air Force Base. I'm near an international airport in spring. And uh, also there's a private airport nearby. <laughs> you know, all, ki all kinds of noise when you're outdoors. Mm. I have a video as well for this beer. So if you feel like making this, I have a video from last year posted. And uh, it, it's the same, same recipe. And uh, so, anyways, I thought I would chat at you for a minute while we're waiting for this uh, wort to continue boiling.
and uh, we'll get back to the spice pack edition and the well met hop edition here shortly. Cheers. All right, guys. 40 minute boil's been going. It's time to add our second hop edition and last hop edition, actually. Well met hops. Just like that. And that spice pack that they gave you to add that holiday spice. Just add it in there. And continue to control the uh, flame as it could boil over. Oh man, guys. First thing I smell with this is the cinnamon. Cinnamon just hits you in the face. I guess people decided to rob a store or something while I'm videoing. I swear, man. The one time I tried to change scenery, and <laughs> you got a guy cutting his yard and blowing the stuff, and you got a siren going off. But I decided to change the scenery on a beautiful day like today. So, anyways, just kind of monitoring this for a moment. And uh, what I failed to do earlier. But I failed to do earlier was uh, add in the corn sugar. So I did go ahead and add that in off camera about 15 minutes into the boil. So when you're adding the extract, don't forget the corn sugar. I got it in early enough, so we're okay. So now we're just gonna let this boil for another 15 minutes and then we're gonna start cooling this thing down. And I've got a work chiller I'll put in this to cool it down. And if you get, you'll notice if you get hops that kind of build up on the side of your pot, just kind of scrape them off into the boil. I've been doing that periodically as when, I, when it starts to boil over, your hops tend to build up on the side of your pot. But get those, get all those hops back down in there if you can, best by scraping the sides of your pot and put, pushing them back down into your boil pot. Give it a good stir. And, uh, but yeah, just kind of get those hops back down in there. Not a big deal. It's just when it foams up, the hops build up on the side of your pot, and then, but you don't want them on the side of your pot, you want them in the beer. So, that's what I'm doing. Just give it a good stir. Since you added the hops and spice pack, don't hurt to give it a good stir. The boil will actually stir it for you to some degree, but um, I like to just stir it in. And also, you'll notice the foam kind of breaks down more when you give this thing a good whirlpool effect. Yeah, just get those delicious hops back down in the beer. And uh, when we get ready to put this in a fermenter, um, we will record then. But um, I will also put my work chiller in here in about five minutes or so to sanitize it. Uh, you can also use an ice bath method in your kitchen. Fill your sink full of ice, put the pot down in there with a the lid on it, and then just kind of stir the pot, stir the pot, and let that ice just kind of cool down the outside of your pot. And you can get all the wort in your pot, you can get it all to, uh, in a little boil over here, you can get that wort to uh, come in contact with the sides and cool down from the ice. So that's what we're doing now. Letting this finish up. Okay guys, I've put my work chiller in, as you can see, uh, about 10 minutes prior to I shut the boil off. And uh, it's sanitized now, and basically what this does is it acts as a heat exchanger. It introduces cold temperature water coming in from your tap or hose spigot, and you get the hot water coming out that's got all the heat with it from the wort. And this will actually speed up your cooling time down quite a bit. Um, like I said, the other alternative is put it in a, what's called an ice bath in your kitchen sink. Just take the whole pot, put it in the kitchen sink with a bunch of ice, and just stir and stir and stir and to help kind of cool it down quick. We want to get this work down to about 70 degrees. Um, actually, we'll probably only get it down to about 75 degrees with the temperature of my tap water. But what I'll do is I'll take the fermenter that it's in and put it in the uh, in my cool brewing... Uh, 
fermenter bag and add some ice bottles and that will also keep the fermentation temperature down to about 68 degrees, 65 degrees. Um, I'm also going to top this up to five gallons with cool tap water and then uh, throw the yeast in there and let it ferment. Now a lot of people, depending on where you live and what kind of water you're using, uh, a lot of people advise using RO water, um, using bottled water. Uh, some people can be pretty particular about their water. And yeah, water does make, water chemistry does make a bit of a difference with your, uh, your beer. Um, but all my beers have come out great. But uh, if you want the best uh, that you could possibly get, then use bottled water, filtered water, whatever. Me, I use it straight on my tap. The water here is not too terrible. It's drinkable. If you like the way your water tastes, then it shouldn't be a big deal. But if your water tastes terrible, uh, you may want to consider, you know, using bottled water or something. So I'm going to get this down to temp, and then we will go inside and we will continue in my kitchen where we will put this in a fermenter and we will take a sample to see the gravity we reading and uh and that'll be about it but so simple to make this beer this is literally only took me about two and a half hours filming it you know it takes a little longer because i have to get the right camera angles and everything but uh but yeah this took this brew will take about two and a half hours it's about two and a half hours less time doing it the extract way Okay, so we've chilled the work down and now it's time to put it in the sanitized fermenter. I'm using a regular six gallon fermenter. It's been sanitized inside real well. And I've also got a lid that I've sprayed with a lot of sanitizer. And I've also got a wine thief to take a sample so we can get a gravity reading. So let's go ahead and pour our pot of chilled wort into the bucket. top it off with cool water. We want to get it up to the five gallon mark. Right at the, let's go right at the five mark. We'll turn the water off. Put this back. Next, we need to take a gravity reading. So dip your sanitized thief and just kind of fill up your graduated cylinder. A little bit more. All right, that should be enough for a sample. Set it aside. Kind of wipe it down on the outside in case you spill a little bit. All right. Now let's take our hydrometer, which is this guy. Basically, a hydrometer is uh, how you get your ABV readings. Later on, you take the original gravity and the final gravity, and then you do your calcs to get your ABV and I'll explain that later. Not in this video, but uh, later on when this is ready. So, take your sample, put your hydrometer in there and give it a spin, get the bubbles off of it. And, kinda hard to tell with all the foam. Let's try to get the foam. Try to kill the foam some here. All right. Gravity reading is basically it tells you how much sugars are dissolved into the wort. And we're looking like we're sitting right about, let me see if I can get a better spin on that. Sitting at about 1.075, looks like. Kind of hard to tell with all the foam. Actually, 1.0776, 1.076. 1 
and I'll have to adjust that based on the temperature of the wort. Uh, the higher the temperature, the reading won't be right. The lower the temperature, the reading won't be right. So what I do is there's actually free calculators out on the internet uh, that you can go to. Just look up uh, ABV calculator and uh, uh, or a specific gravity calculator, and it'll ask you like the temperature of the liquid and then the uh, uh, gravity reading that you're getting, and then it'll adjust it to what it should be. So, anyways, um, next thing I gotta pitch the yeast. Okay, the kit came with Nottingham yeast, so what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and pitch it into our chilled wort. Make sure you sanitize it first. I've sanitized this already. Just dip the whole packet before you open it, dip the whole packet in sanitizer. And the scissors should be sanitized as well. So, you're simply going to take the yeast, which is dry, and you're going to sprinkle it. Just sprinkle it all in there. You don't have to do anything more. And that's it. Now, I have an airlock with a bung for putting. Actually, I don't need the bung, I'm sorry. I'm used to using carboys. Let's see if I can get this airlock off. Don't need the bung. <laughs> you see, this, this is wet because I sanitized it. So, take your lid, put your airlock in the lid. Like so, and uh, it's got a little grommet, so it just kind of sits in there and it's real airtight. So then we're going to take it and put it on the fermenter. Just kind of snap the lid in place. Good and sealed, and that's it. And we'll put this in a cool place, store it in an area that's about 70 degrees. Uh, 60 to 70 degrees is recommended. Uh, I wouldn't store it in anywhere where it's going to be over 70. 75 is really pushing it because you'll start to get some funky flavors in your beer because the yeast will get stressed out and start releasing all kinds of off flavors in the beer. But if you keep it in the happy temperature range of 70 degrees, 65 to 70, you will your beer will taste the way it's supposed to taste. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in my cool brewing fermenter bag and uh, keep it around 68 degrees. And then I will do a video uh, where I show off how the beer came out and, uh, and review it. As this is a kit, I haven't bought kits in so long. I've just brewed my own, just different recipes, but this time I decided to do this for you guys, uh, extract brew. Uh, something you should definitely start with if you're new to brewing, I'm not saying you can't start with all grain, but I highly recommend that you do um, extract brewing. And until next time, cheers. <laughs>